welcome to ET Now Startup Central, India's first and only daily show dedicated to startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Sandra Shrikant coming to you live from India's startup capital, Bangalore, and we have a power-packed show lined up for you over the next 20 minutes. And I'm Krishna Kumar coming to you live from ET Now's Mumbai studios. First up, a check on the headlines here at ET Now Startup Central. He's one of India's most successful dot-com entrepreneurs and an investor, and he's worried sick about the cash burn by internet companies. Avnish Bajaj of Matrix Partners outlines the fault lines on the show today. An exclusive interview with the director NR Narmurthy's low profile investment firm Catamaran. Find out about the themes that Catamaran likes to put money in. If you're a startup seeking guidance, there's one more accelerator you can head to. Aerospace major Airbus is bringing its sector agnostic accelerator program to India. And our special segment, Three Mistakes of My Life, Kunal Shah of Free Charge tells you about the three mistakes he made that you can learn from. Headlines, Krishna, and over straight to the top story. Now, in the last few weeks, uh, one of India's most successful dot com entrepreneurs and investor of, of, uh, at Matrix Partners, Avnish Bajaj, set up a tweet storm of sorts where he was very worried about uh, the amount of cash that internet companies are burning and about how a lot of entrepreneurs haven't adjusted to the new normal. Uh, we have Avnish Bajaj on the show today to outline just what is worrying him and more importantly, why now? Avnish, uh, thank you so much for talking uh, to ET Now Startup Central. I want to start with, you know, the tweets over the last few weeks about uh, the levels of cash burn, how entrepreneurs haven't internalized the new environment. I mean, why these tweets and why now? What's really making you worried? Yeah, so I have actually not been saying it only for the last few weeks. If you look at my Twitter feed, the first time I said it was in August. And frankly, uh, I'm, I'm happy to go on record to say I was about to say it in June. But some of my companies were uh, at, time, at that time raising money, so I didn't want, want to really uh, go and talk about it openly. So the reality is this, this, the fact that this was at an unsustainable level was clear, actually clear a while ago. But uh, the fact that the tide was turning became clear, I remember, on June 12th. Because on June 12th is when the Chinese market crashed quite a bit. So this has been going on for a while. The, the fact that the environment is, is turning, all of that, we have been telling our companies for the last nine months, not just for the last uh, few weeks. The comment in the more recent past is that uh, is based on the realization that I'm finding stickiness in views of entrepreneurs, which is inaccurate. So, which was the comment around $1 million plus burns. So we've actually run an analysis. And if you run that analysis, you net net reach the conclusion and we ran the analysis of how many companies raise money below 10 million dollars 10 to 25 million dollars 25 to 50 50 to 100 and 100 plus and what you will find is that the last 18 months was an absolute aberration it is never going to happen again and even if you draw parallels with china what you will reach the conclusion you will reach is that 10 to 25 million dollar rounds will increase in india uh, but this 50 million plus, 100 million dollar plus, I, you know, IPO, pre, uh, private IPO rounds are not going to be happening. So the comment is therefore in that light that when, when you talk to entrepreneurs, and it's not our entrepreneurs, I'm talking about people in general, I often find people saying, you know, my burn is only one and a half million. Oh, that's, that's a very high burn. That's not only, right? So that was the context of that comment. So companies really need to have a reality check of steady state funding environment rather than draw conclusions from the previous 18 months. Avneez, there's no doubt that burn rate is the hottest topic uh, as far as the startup universe in India is concerned. But uh, I wanted to ask you, this is Krishna here from India's Mumbai Studios. You've built and sold companies during both the boom and the bust cycles. Is it different this time around? Because you know the market potential is huge. Mobile internet is only going to go up from here on, isn't it? Of course, of course, of course, of course. No, no, yeah, yeah, you're preaching to the choir. I mean, I have been, 
I have been negative on mobile internet until about 2011, 2012. So the factors are different. We have a real market. We are going through a phase where there is going to be a multiplication of mobile internet users and the market at scale, which only happens once in the lifetime of a country. Now again, if you draw a parallel with China, that happened in China between 2006 and 2013 and created you know, about $100 billion companies. We absolutely believe we are in the middle of that. So don't get me wrong on that. The, the issue is everybody figured that out. And when everybody figured that out, they got too excited. So you still have to follow the normal company building processes. The unit economics still has to work. That's the context of the comment. Now, again, even in China until the recent two years, a number of the vast majority of the multi-billion dollar companies were created in a very capital efficient fashion. That's what's broken here, right? Our monetization, even at scale, is going to be one third to one fifth of China, which is, by the way, three to five years away, even to get to that scale. So, so I think that is the comment, but, but I'm very bullish. In fact, I believe 2016 in particular is going to be a great vintage to, to invest because 2015, as you know, was a horrible vintage to invest. It was too frothy. Uh, you know, in your tweets, you spoke about entrepreneurs who still haven't internalized the new environment. Can you, you know, get into the specifics? What kind of business models are we talking about here? Yeah, of course, all the, all the local uh, service delivery plays. Now, let's step back. So my comment was in the light of maybe some companies that are currently already burning, but, you know, the companies that were already... Uh, underway, had raised money, th their investors would have kind of uh, made sure that the rational way of doing things had started to happen. What I'm finding is because of the last 18 months, the new entrepreneurs that are coming in, for example, somebody has a business plan and a team and maybe a little bit of a product. They come in and say, we want to raise 5 million. That's ridiculous. You have to raise at that stage, it is, you know, 1 million at most. So, there is a certain normal way of business, building businesses. As the environment turned and there was a lot of land grab, there were certain steps taken, which, by the way, may seem irrational. May al I can also argue that they were rational because you don't want to lose market share to the global guys, right? So certain steps were taken, which in that environment made sense. If you're getting money at zero cost, if you have 0% interest rate, for example, on money, you should go and do some stuff with it, right? Now, once that, once that environment changes, then you have to react to that. These companies have reacted. Unfortunately, and, and you know, which is why I'm very happy to have, be having this discussion with you, Chandra, is that it hasn't fully sunk into the new, new breed of entrepreneurs. So they are still coming with a lot of stage mismatches and coming and asking for $20 million rounds and building their businesses, assuming $1 million burn is fine, as opposed to thinking about a 6 to $8 million round and building their businesses accordingly. To answer your second question, Tons of businesses got funded that shouldn't have gotten funded. And we may have done some of that. I'm not saying that we are holier than thou. So negative gross margin businesses, local delivery businesses. Essentially, there was a land grab where growth at the expense of unit profitability. Now, that often happens. And you know what? In certain cases, it's still okay as long as at scale your unit profitability works. What was happening was that you had business models getting funded where even at scale, the unit profitability doesn't work, right? And a bunch of these local logistics types of businesses, local delivery businesses uh, were, were uh, fall in that bucket. You had mentioned earlier about e-commerce. You know, it is, I think, all of us wonder how that war will play out, right? And every day there is a, there is a new article about that. Uh, there also, it's unclear. You know, is, it, is there anything beyond discounting? Uh, that that will win and and therefore how much amount of capital will it take all right Avnish that was pretty comprehensive but uh, I have one last final question to ask you you know would we still be having this conversation if the China crash hadn't happened uh, yes and no so so for the for the bigger business so at least as far as we are concerned you and I would be having this conversation because if you look at our track record, after February of last year, we didn't make any large investment. The only investment we made was probably Tiny Owl. Uh, but actually, that was even prior. So 
we did not actually make, we felt that the environment was too frothy. And so, all of last year, we did not participate in any series B's, any series C's, did not even write more than a 3, 4 million dollar check uh, up front. And at, instead, what we did was we started doing going earlier, doing some select seed investments and said, let us ride out this invest, uh, phase. So, we would have ha been having this conversation. I would have been much more worried because I would have felt that maybe I am wrong and we are sitting out the market and you know maybe we need to participate in it. So, I was very happy when the bubble burst. Um, but the worst thing that would have happened is that a lot of the bad practices would have become even more ingrained in the DNA. And then it just it's like toothpaste coming out of it's just very hard to put it in back in right so it, it just becomes much much harder to course correct so in some way I truly believe by the way that this is the best thing that could have happened for the country we have a fantastic market opportunity we we are going to create a number of billion dollar plus companies you know unicorn will be a good word in India over the next five to seven years but we need to build it correctly and not just go you know. Um, I can't think of a better word than say piss away money. Some very wise words coming in from Avneesh Bajaj of uh, Matrix Partners. We certainly hope uh, startups take note, uh, Avneesh, and arrest the cash burn at appropriate levels. But uh, moving on, um, another big voice on the show. Uh, we speak to Catamaran's investment director, Abhishek Lakshmi Narayan. Now, Catamaran, the private, in, a private investment uh, firm owned by the Narayanamurti uh, family, has been pretty reticent all along, but it's built a very strong portfolio which includes the likes of uh, Hector, Hector Beverages. It also has a joint venture going with the Amazon on the seller side in India. I asked Abhishek about uh, the investment themes that Catamaran follows and what really sets it apart from typical VC funds. Our mandate is a quite simple. Um, it's about investing in companies and entrepreneurs who are fundamentally changing the structure of the ecosystem. And that takes a long while to actually find and, and identify. Um, so we don't have a specific sector focus. We don't have a specific stage focus. Uh, compared to a traditional VC, how is Catamaran different? You know, because, um, I mean, not exactly a family office, but, you know, it's a, it's a different investment firm. So in terms of uh, your expectations from startups or your portfolio companies, how does it really become different? And even the uh, funding cycle, how is it different from how a traditional VC office? I think fundamentally our difference is we're very long-term oriented. Uh, we're fundamental value-oriented investors. We're patient. Um, we have no specific exit horizon. So we're really looking for these companies to fundamentally change their ecosystem over a long period of time. Um, that makes us sort of structurally different with some of the other VCs. We, we tend to co-invest with them a lot um, and often have sort of synergies across. But um, we are not looking for exits in three years, in five years. We're looking for entrepreneurs who are truly passionate about what they're working on. Right. And how much of an influence is, you know, the way Mr. Murthy built Infosys, right? Um, the stress was always on cash flows and profitability and um, running uh, operations as efficiently as possible. Does that always seep in in your portfolio companies as well? You know, the, ca the less of cash burn and more of unit economics right from the start. Absolutely. I think that's a big... Um, the way Mr. Murthy built Infosys, I think, is an example to every single entrepreneur in the country. It's aspirational. And yes, his ethos is a, is a big part of the way we think about companies like Catamaran. I think the most important aspect there is value system. Um, and we don't say that lightly. We're really looking for entrepreneurs with a strong value system. What are the decisions they're going to make when we're not in the room? Um, we don't date, we marry these companies, so we really need to know what they're about. Uh, give us a sense of, you know, the overall trends that you're seeing now, because um, a lot of people are talking about how there is going to be a pullback this year, more caution, uh, partially because of China and global factors, and also because the last two years have been unprecedented in, you know, the amount of funding that we've seen across stages. Um, are you also adopting a similar approach, perhaps more in early stage, smaller amounts, compared to the way you've uh, been operating before? You know, to be honest, um, the way we operate, we're sort of heads down, working with companies, working with entrepreneurs at a very, um, at a basic level. And I think we, we're sort of insulated by what else is happening around us. 
um, yes, there, is, there have been funds who are becoming less aggressive about India, but that really doesn't affect a, an entrepreneur who is truly doing something unique, differentiated, and long term. So I think for those entrepreneurs, you're always going to have access to capital, and I don't think that's going to slow down, and that hasn't. There's still enough capital waiting to be invested, but I think the bar for differentiation and the bar for doing something really different has changed. Now, away from that and on to the top of buzzing stories in the world of startups. After slugging it out in the four-wheeler segment, the world's most highly valued startup, Uber, and India's answer to the transportation problem, Ola, are facing off in the most popular two-wheeler market. Just a day after Uber announced a pilot of its on-demand motorcycle, Uber Motor, Ola has upped the ante by launching the same offering in Bengaluru. Consumers will be able to opt for a bike ride on the app for as low as two rupees per kilometer. The competition in the e-wallet space is all set to heat up as India's biggest e-commerce player Flipkart has launched its online wallet Flipkart Money. This comes at a time when the action in the digital wallet space is heating up with several launches over the last several months. Other e-commerce players like Paytm and Snapdeal have also been battling it out to gain market share in the crowded segment. It will be interesting to see how Flipkart manages to leave its mark. The Delhi High Court today pulled up tax officials for arresting a senior executive of online travel portal Make My Trip in a service tax evasion case. The court has asked for the names of the officials who arrested Vice President of Finance MK Pillai without any show cost notice. Remember, Make My Trip is facing a service tax demand to the tune of 65 crore rupees. The company says it has been wrongly charged under service tax rules as it is just an intermediary between consumers and hotels. Thanks for that, uh, Krishna. You know, Make My Trip case coming just when Modi is talking about ease of doing business. But moving to our special segment today, The Three Mistakes of My Life. And today we have uh, Free Charges founder and CEO Kunal Shah talking about the three mistakes that he made in his career that you can learn from. I think the first mistake I would talk about is I started up pretty late in my life. I started at 28. I should have started up early. The second mistake is I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't have the self-confidence on believing if their idea is real. We had an original idea uh, compared to a copycat idea that a lot of people were doing. We did not have the self-belief to kind of go uh, really big. I think that's the thing that uh, India needs to focus on. The third thing I would say is that the mistake I would consider is uh, uh, just uh, not uh, uh, worrying about the factors around the thing and just kind of focus on the execution. I think we tend to uh, get distracted a lot of things. So I think saying no distraction focus is the third mistake. That brings us to the end of a power-packed edition of Startup Central. Big voices, big lessons. But with that, it's over to you, Krishna. Absolutely. The average age of our, of our interviewees have to be somewhere between 25 to, to like uh, 28 if uh, Kunal Shah is still about 28, 29. They're still very power packed and that's the beauty of it all. But with that, it is a wrap on 18 Hour Startup Central. Thank you so much for watching. Coming up next is Market Watch. Keep watching 18 Hour. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.